What's going on, YouTube? And it's those. I'm going to be revealing the top 10 times women have shot their shot at me. Cold approached me, initiated with me, was ready to risk it all for me. But before I reveal those top 10 occurrences, make sure y'all like, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications, and share the content with your family, friends, colleagues, and peers so that they can ingest the Q pill as well. Let's get a dose of this shit. <laughs> those of you who are unaware I am a ladies man I will admit that I got four messages so far today on Valentine's Day that asked me will you be my Valentine this is not unusual for me as a matter of fact 20 years ago to date I got my very first will you be my Valentine offer in fifth grade from a girl who had a crush on me in my class now I had another girlfriend in fifth grade at the time and this girl she didn't reveal that she liked me until Valentine's Day where it was the secret card the secret admirer thing and you ask will that person be your Valentine and she was cute she was light skinned she had hazel brown eyes they were almost greenish and she had freckles she was cute I didn't really like her though because I thought she was annoying and I did accept her invitation to be her Valentine but as I expected it was annoying because she wouldn't leave me alone all day she kept asking for a kiss and I just wasn't at that point yet. As a matter of fact, the girl that I was actually dating in fifth grade, she gave me my first kiss on the cheek and I acted overwhelmed and I was dramatic. She just snatched me and kissed me on the cheek randomly and I was falling all down oh, and holding my heart and just being extra. So I wasn't even at the point yet to, I was still a little shy about kissing a girl on the lip at that point in fifth grade. Made a big jump in sixth grade because I actually ended up sucking my first titty on the back of the bus in sixth grade. So I made a huge jump. Puberty hit me hard between fifth grade and sixth grade. But that's a, that's a conversation for another day. The top 10 times women have cold approached me. As I said, listen, I've been featured on the shade room. Women slide in my DM all the time. I'm on numerous male eye candy pages on Instagram. I used to average like 5,000 likes on a selfie on my old Instagram. The highest amount of likes I got on one selfie was 9,000 with like a thousand comments. Women hard eyes, hard eyes this, hard eyes that. So I'm used to female attention. It's a little different though when women start to cold approach you in real life because let's face it, most men, 99% of men just don't experience women walking up to them and saying, hey, I think you're attractive or even trying to run game and spit game to them because that's how overwhelmed they are with their attraction to this guy. But I've been one of the guys fortunate enough to experience this. And I'm going to tell you guys the top 10 accounts in which I've experienced this. And all of these accounts have been within the past five years of my life. So Let's start with number 10. Number 10 is the mall girl. So I'm in the mall, I'm walking, minding my business. I like to shop alone and I see these three girls walking. I didn't really pay them any attention. I had on a white V-neck from Banana Republic and I had on some, some pink shorts. I had the country club look going on. I had on some white Nike Air Max, the new ones. I had the country club look going on. And then all of a sudden I hear, a guy in the pink shorts in the middle of the mall. Mind you, I'm in, I'm in King of Prussia located just outside of philly it's the largest mall on the east coast high profile mall it's a simon property hey guy in the pink shorts and at first i didn't realize they were talking to me because i didn't think there would be girls yelling at me in the middle of the mall cat calling me in the middle of the mall and i turn around and they're looking at me and giggling and they're like come here and i'm like what's up it's like you are fine as hell oh my god can i get you a number i'm like i have a girlfriend didn't have a girlfriend at the time, but they made me feel uncomfortable. Just how overtly aggressive that they was. Oh, well, she ain't got to know. At that point, I could tell they were young. They were probably like 20, 21, which I have no issue with. But it was the way that they was acting that just made me uneasy. It's really brief. Girls shouting at me in the mall trying to get my attention. But it was the fact that they were bold enough to yell across the mall and get my attention while I was by myself. Number nine, the DoorDash girl. I like the DoorDash. I DoorDash every now and then, especially when I lived up in Philadelphia. I would go to this area known as Bryn Mawr. Really, really nice, prestigious area. It's actually where Villanova University is located in that area. And I had a DoorDash delivery to a dorm. And when I went to the dorm, out walks this fine ass, blonde, blue eyes, silhouette was gorgeous, 
and she had on tights. She had on gym wear. And immediately, I was like, chill out, Q. Chill out. But I didn't even have to do anything. When she came to meet me to get her food, she said, you are handsome as hell. And I said, shit. Internally, you know, I'm like, ah. About to turn into one of them videos where you fuck the door dasher. I'm about to have one of these adult films going on. But I maintained my cool and I said, you gorgeous yourself. I appreciate it. And she was like, let me get your number. We can do that. So I gave her my number. She hit me up. That was that. Number eight. This was two weeks ago when I went to Wingstop. I went to Wingstop. And when I went in Wingstop, Immediately when I walk in the door, there is a woman eyeballing the fuck out of me with a smirk on her face looking me up and down when I go in. And I didn't say anything to her. Actually, I tried to avoid eye contact because she made me uncomfortable with the way that she was staring at me with the smirk on her face. I had no idea if she was scheming, if she was plotting, she was evil. I tried to avoid eye contact. I was like, maybe if I don't look at it, it won't notice. Then she proceeds to ask me. She says, are you here to pick up your order? I said, Yes. She says, what's the name? I said, Q. She literally yells back to the people working at the pickup window, order for Q. So I'm thinking she works there. Then I realize she doesn't work there because she gets her order and she's leaving. And as she walks by me, she says, did you want me to go to? And I said, huh? And she said, I'm just playing with you, but you fine as hell though. And I said, oh, thank you. And she said, you welcome. Enjoy your day. I was, I was left kind of stuck. I had no idea what to say. It actually caught me off guard because that was low key a smooth line that she hit me with. And immediately I thought, well, she gotta be a whore because there's no way that she could learn pickup lines like that if she doesn't approach men often. So she has to be a woman who approaches men often in order for her to hit me with something like that because that's something I would probably say to a woman. Number seven, the Starbucks girl. This happened about two years ago. I'm sitting in Starbucks and I'm actually reviewing, peer reviewing a research article. I'm going over a research article in psychology i hear this slap on my table and i look up like and there's a woman sitting over the table like this staring me dead in my eyes as i'm looking at her like can i help you and she goes what's your deal i said i'm sorry what do you mean and she goes are you taken or what and i say oh yeah i'm, I'm taken i have a girlfriend because at the time I was involved with somebody and I was being loyal to the person that I was involved with. And she proceeds to say, I figured you had a girlfriend cause you too fine to be sitting over here by yourself. I was gonna come ask if I could sit with you. I said, oh no, I'm all right, I have a girlfriend. And she goes, all right, well, just let me know when y'all break up. That's legit what she said to me. I don't know this woman, she doesn't know me. I don't know her name. I have no way of contacting her, but I think she was trying to allude to the fact that she wanted to exchange numbers when she said that. I'm gonna assume she didn't. I play dumb, I often play dumb when I'm not interested. I act like I'm a geek who has no game and have no experience with women when I'm talking to a woman that I don't want. I'll actually purposely be boring, be unattractive, or at least try to be, so that the woman will be turned off and leave me alone. This is actually my repulsivity tactic. Number six, Qdoba girl. And many of you, if you've seen me on the Sizecast with Justin Wilder last year, then you know this story. Because this happened a week before I went out there to Miami to be on Sizecast. I was at Cadoba. I was getting out of my car. And I seen a girl getting out of her car at the same time. And I seen her notice me through the corner of her eye. Like she, she kind of looked back at me and kept walking. She was in front of me. I was about 10 feet behind her. And when she got to the door, she actually waited for me to come to the door. At that moment when she waited for me to come to the door, I knew that she was attracted to me because what woman will wait for a man another five, six seconds to hold the door open for him? So I knew she was attracted to me. So I went in there. My food was already ready because I ordered pickup. She was ordering through the line. And when I picked up my food, I seen her looking at me and I proceeded to walk out. I didn't say anything to her. She was actually cute. She was cute. I didn't say anything to her. I walked out the door. When I walked out the door, I took about four or five steps out the door. I hear the door open. I turn around and here she comes. Excuse me. I turn around. Yeah. You are so handsome. Can I get your number? Y'all think I gave her my number? I gave her my number. She was attracted. I, I, I gave her my number. But I didn't want anything from her. I just wanted to know that I still got it. It was an ego boost. And when she texted me, I didn't respond. 
But the woman essentially ran me down out of Qdoba and overtly stated that I was attractive to her and then asked me for my number like a real man would. And I said, eh, made me feel like the woman in that instance a little bit. Yeah, got to respect the fact that she came at me like that. Got to respect the confidence, the bravery, the boldness, the risk. I can appreciate that because I know how hard it is for a man to do it because I do it all the time to women when I cold approach them. So yes, ma'am, you can have my number. You're cute. Take my number. I won't text you back, but just take it anyway. It makes me feel good. It makes you feel like you got me. We both win. Number five, women honking me down as I was on my jog with no shirt on. Now, when I was living in Philly, I used to go on jogs. I used to go on shirtless jogs on purpose. I knew what I was doing. I got cat caught by women a whopping 22 times. I documented it. I recorded it from honking car horns to saying something to me to stopping me to asking me if they would if they could jog with me. It was a very interesting phenomenon to say the least because I had no idea that women were this bold and to experience this on an hour and a half jog from University City to Center City and back to University City, I realized that women are a lot bolder than what most men think. If you're attractive enough, women will be ready to risk it all. But in particular, one instance stood out to me. When I started my jog, I wasn't even a block away from my apartment. A car with two women in it had pulled beside me as I'm jogging down a one-way street and they stopped and honked the horn several times as we was waiting at the stoplight because I couldn't go across the street yet because it was a stoplight. I looked in the car, they rolled the window down and was like, you fine as fuck, boy. And I said, thank you. Then the light turned green and I went and they went. Do you know these women circled the block? Cause it was on a one way street. So they had to come back around. They couldn't turn around. They circled the block in the amount of time that it took me to jog about another 200 feet and came back and stopped me and asked if I had a girlfriend and if they could get my number. Well, one did, the one in the passenger seat did. But I responded with, yes, I have a girlfriend and I don't want no scrub. Staring out the passenger side of her best friend's ride trying to holler at me. Nah, I won't do no scrubs. They were okay looking women. I didn't really have an issue with it, but it was extremely interesting to see them spin the block for me because that's how attracted they were to me. That doesn't happen every day to your average man. Number four, concert girl. And once again, this was another day. I was out on a jog around Philly and on Benjamin Franklin Parkway. For those of you who aren't familiar with Philly's geography, Benjamin Franklin Parkway is where the art museum is and the Rocky statue is located. I was jogging right there. There happened to be a concert going on. So when there's a concert right there, they shut down that whole Benjamin Franklin Parkway. So there was a lot of people out there when I was jogging. I had no idea there was going to be a concert going on out there. That's normally my route of jogging that I take. As I'm jogging that route, there's a group of women coming towards me like we're, we're about to meet. I have my headphones in and I can hear a woman say, excuse me, excuse me, boy in the green shorts. And she kind of stops me and I stop and I take out my earphones and, sh and she said, where you going? And I said, I'm just jogging. She said, hmm. Well, you about to go home? And I said, yeah, I'm about to go home. And she said, you need some company? Can I come with you? I said, say what? Like that? That's what we doing? Ain't you supposed to be out here at the concert? She said, fuck the concert. I'm looking at you right now. What you trying to do? And I said, nah, I'm okay. I actually got to go home. I got to take care of some work. I got to handle some business. I wouldn't be able to play too long. And she's like, mm, okay, well, you want to give me a number so you can hit me up whenever you get free? And I said, uh, I'm going to have to pass. I'll see you around, though. And she said, okay, just like that. And I just kept on about my job. These women are really bold. These women are becoming bold. Number three, the Whatever Podcast. Now, some of you who watch the Whatever Podcast and have seen me go on may have seen some of the girls show some cues of attraction to me when they interact with me. But there was one girl in particular. I'm not going to say which girl it is, but if you guys watch certain clips, you'll be able to figure it out. She's actually really, really attractive, and she's not an OnlyFans 304. But immediately when I walked up and we were all waiting outside to go into Brian's studio, she seen me approach and her face lit up. She had the prettiest smile that just lit up on her face like she knew I was fresh meat. When I walked up, she looked at me, she smiled. I tried not to pay her too much attention. I didn't want to stare at her too hard or too long. And then she said, how you doing? And I said, what's good? And she was like, I'm such and such. And I said, Q. And that was outside. From there, when we went upstairs, she hovered around me a lot. Before the start of the show, 
when I was getting my drink like I normally do when I'm chilling on the couch, she was just right there in close proximity to me and she was making small talk. So she was asking me why I was on the show, what I do. She offered to share some pastries that Brian had bought. And from that point on, I knew that she was attracted to me. Fast forward after the show, when we're getting ready to leave, what does she do? She walks up to me and she asks, what you about to do? I said, nothing. I'm probably go chill at the hotel, watch the games, fall asleep. And she said, oh, okay, want to grab some food? I said, let's grab some food. She was smooth with it. And the looks that she gave me throughout the whole podcast, she would give me looks that y'all couldn't see on camera, but I have them seductive looks, winks. Whenever the camera wasn't on us, she was looking my way. I have her number. We don't talk, but she'll answer if I ever want to link. Number two, Six Flags Girl. So for those of you who don't know, I am a roller coaster enthusiast. I love roller coasters. I ride roller coasters 24 seven. I will go to amusement parks by myself. I will ride roller coasters by myself. On this day in particular, I was at the time cohabitating with the woman that I was dating. This was last year and she had to go to work for a little bit and I wanted to go to Six Flags so I told her I was going without her. When I got to Six Flags as I'm about to ride one of my favorite roller coasters known as Nitro. This woman wasn't attractive either. Just approached me at the locker as I'm putting my phone in the locker and starts talking to me and immediately I knew she was attracted to me and I said please don't let this be one of these days where this woman is about to follow me around trying to ride everything with me and you know what? That's exactly what it turned into. I tried to keep the talk as brief as possible, but she would not leave my side. When I got in the line for Nitro, she was right there. And when I got on the roller coaster Nitro, she was right beside me. Don't ask me how she ended up there. I didn't know that she would follow me on the ride, but she ended up right there beside me. Then I went to get on Wonder Woman. Guess who was with me? She was right there beside me, still talking, asking me what I do. I told her what I do. I did my best to turn her off. I did my best to repulse her. I did my best to discourage her from liking me any further by telling her that I'm really controversial. I talk about women. I hold women accountable. Women be in my DMs telling me to shut the fuck up and I hate my mom and they dislike me. I told her that I'm called misogynistic and sexist. I did everything I could to rid myself of this girl. She would not leave my side. As a matter of fact, do you guys know what she said to me? That's good. Women should be held accountable. I like guys who do that. I said, shit. Oh my God. Because that means she wasn't going to leave. So the way that I got rid of her is that I told her that the girl that I date was on her way to Six Flags. And she said, well, why didn't y'all ride together? She's probing too much. She's asking too many questions because she had to work. So I decided to come without her. And I told her that I would come back and get her later. That's how I got rid of her. But she walked with me the whole way to Six Flags exit. So I had to tell the girl that I was dating at the time, listen, you off yet? I'm about to come get you because this girl at Six Flags is hounding me. She won't leave me alone. She's stalking me. So I'm going to drive back to Philadelphia from New Jersey, pick you up. And we are coming back to Six Flags so that I don't have to see this woman. And you guys know I did just that. Left Six Flags at noon, drove back to Philadelphia got the girl that I was dating and cohabitating with, picked her up, and we went back to Six Flags together, and I was hoping and praying that I did not run into that girl again. She ended up following me on Instagram because I gave her my Instagram, and lucky for me, she seen a post to where I was calling women out, and it triggered her. And when she got triggered, she started talking trash. And I said, ma'am, respectfully, you are one of the most unattractive women who I've ever been around. Please stop commenting on my shit and leave me alone. And I blocked her, and that was it. Never heard from her again. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, the number one cold approach that I have experienced from a woman, Chick-fil-A girl. So I'm at Chick-fil-A, and as I walk in, there is a gorgeous Cambodian girl staring into my soul the moment I walk in the door. And I see her staring at me, and she, she is gorgeous. But I didn't say anything. I kept ahead to get my Chick-fil-A. As I'm getting my Chick-fil-A, who appears to my right, just staring at me face to face and says, I know you see me staring at you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's how she approached me. I know you see me staring at you. I said, yeah, I seen you staring at me, but I figured I'd let you go ahead and stare and admire. 
And I figured if you wanted to talk to me, you'd come up to me. And she responds, oh, you like that? And I said, yeah, women typically come at me. I was being a little flirtatious, a little cocky. See how she responds to that. So we ended up having a short conversation right there in Chick-fil-A because she was attractive. I could not at least hold the conversation with this girl. This girl was fine as hell. I'm telling y'all, it was it was pretty difficult for me to control myself over how fine this girl actually was. Then because we were close to the university in which we stayed, she asked if I would walk her to her apartment. I say, yeah, I'll walk you to your apartment. So as we walk into her apartment, we're talking, we get to the door, and she asked me for my number. I give her my number, and then she asked for a hug. I give her a hug, and as I'm pulling away, you guys know when you pull away from the hug, that intense moment of attraction just overwhelms you to the point where you feel like you need to kiss. On her end, that happened. She stared at me so seductively, so attractively menacing like she wanted to bite my face off. When I tell y'all, I almost succumbed to the feminine power of the female species right there outside on a sidewalk, it's an understatement. But being the guy that I am, I said, hey, stop, cut it out. Just like that. Because I could tell the way she was looking at me that she actually wanted to kiss me right then and there. And she asked me right then and there, do I talk to somebody? I said, yeah, I got to be honest. I talk to somebody. I date around, but I'm talking to somebody. My attention is focused on somebody. And I said, honestly, if we get together, it would just be a quick fling. It would be a fuck you and then probably never talk to you again. And she responds, well, I'm not just a quick fuck. So I'm going to have to pass on that. And I said, fair enough. I said, fair enough. Do you guys know two weeks later, she hit my phone asking where I was and telling me she needs some dick. And I'm going to just end it right there. But those are my top 10 experiences with women cold approaching me. Pretty exhilarating to say the least. And it's always interesting to see how women behave when it comes to them meeting a man that they find physically attractive. They somehow perk up the levels of courage and risk taking that we don't even see most men demonstrate when it comes to women. And you guys just have to understand that's because that is how overwhelmed they are by their attraction to that guy. And women typically don't experience that often. Now me, I understand objectively, I don't like to brag, but I understand objectively that I'm a highly desirable guy. All the metrics suggest that, all the metrics support that. So these are more common experiences for me than it would be for 90% of men. But I'm still a guy who prefers to approach the women that I want because I'm well aware that only three types of women approach you. A quick fuck or casual fling, a woman who's less attractive than you, who's not on your level, and a woman who's desperate. And all three of those women disqualify themselves from long-term commitment for me. So if you guys see me end up in a relationship or marry, just know I approached her. She didn't approach me, even though I get approached quite often by women on social media and in real life. I'll catch you guys on the next dosage of Q-Pill. I'm Suave Q, aka the Q-Pill. Happy Valentine's Day to y'all. Over and out.